all right so now we have this alarm tower which we can shoot and deactivate so it goes to the jammed state and I can complete destroy it too right uh, the next step is step is implementing the alarm how it should look when the alarm is turned on after that we can look into the details like how to activate alarms when enemies are alerted things like that okay so first i'll implement the sound uh, and also like turning on and off these bulbs so as for the sounds um, uh, i have already imported this sound effect alarm sound so I open it uh, as that animation I'll choose loud control and uh, let's attach that sound effect alarm sound to the alarm tower maybe we should add it place it over here because it makes more sense and uh, alarm sound okay this shouldn't be automatically activated it should be activated only when we activate the alarm but for now, for testing, I'll set the alarm go off. Oh, oh, first, let's create a custom event. Toggle alarm. This also needs to have enable. Uh, parameter so if this is true we should we need to activate the alarm so at the moment I only have the sound so I'll just activate the sound and I'll call it only for testing have a delay of three seconds and call toggle alarm with an enable all right now let's test so in five seconds three see not five three seconds That's the alarm sound. Uh, I need to make sure this is I'm um, I have enabled looping. Yeah, I have. Great. So the next thing for the alarm tower is having these lights turn on and off. Um, but how do we do that? Uh, if I oh, I need to go there. If I yeah. Here, if I isolate the materials, this is for the speakers. This one is for the tower base. And here, if I open this, you can see an MSU part 2. Okay, so this is basically these lights uh, but I think I need to have more control over this uh, over the emission of the lights 
so but if I just add two cylinders here maybe uh, yeah I think cylinder would do Oh, shall we have some sockets here? Oh, here. Let's add this socket. To the light. L1 can I duplicate this yeah L2 L2 should go here all right um, front So should go here L1 should go here okay now we can easily attach that cylinder to the socket parent socket L1 and remove the offset Okay, all right, we need to scale it up to cover the light like this. Okay. Oh, it's not exactly matching. Okay. One four point one four that works. All right, I'll name this as cell one. Mm. And duplicate this with, with control D and that is already named twelve two and attach twelve two. So it already looks this one could be a bit too small. Okay. So it doesn't look good when we look at it like this, but. Hmm. In the world space, it's all right. So now let's create. Uh, actually, we don't need to create. Let's have. Uh, we already have this M light material, but I need to uh, have some variable light. So therefore, I'll create 
another material M plankin light and let's have a color vector parameter color let's start with red like this and I'll turn this into the only shading model so we only get MSU color let's multiply this with Uh, let's promote this to a parameter MSU. Okay, MSU multiplier. Mm. And as the default value, let's have one. Right now, let's multiply this with something else and connect here. So, here let's add an input of a sign and let's connect this into the tie. So, now we get a blinking light. And if I go here, I have period. So we can basically change the frequency, but uh, I don't think I can promote this to a variable. So here, let me add another multiplier and promote this to a parameter. Link speed. to keep consistency let's have it together blink speed if I give it one it's like this so if we need we can clamp this value like this For minimum, if we don't want it to get become dark, we can set the minimum like 0.2 and maximum we don't really need to keep a limit. So like this. And if I have a very high MSU multiplier, it would look like this. Okay, but I'm gonna change it to 10. No, maybe 500 is okay because it's a uh, blinking light. Uh, one more thing if we need to have an offset here, we can add something. Promote to parameter offset so if we have two instances of this material if i change the offset you will see something different uh, but we need to have instances for that all right apply and save now let me assign this to the cylinder both cylinders now this is how you see it when it is when the alarm is turned on maybe we can 
try a larger emission if needed and if we need to like not blink in the same time so we can create another instance am i blinking inst and have an offset here let's see and let's assign the instance to the other one to one of them say this one see now it changes the blinking pattern okay uh, and one more thing if you make this offset one i think it should overlap see yeah okay so we should only make enable the visibility of the cylinders when the alarm goes off so that means here set hidden in game make it false okay and by default they should be hidden in game because by default the alarm is not turned off all right now when the siren goes off they should disappear see nice uh, now that's only for testing of course so in the next time let's work on how to uh, activate the alarm tower based on real um, AI inputs like when AI characters see the player when they're actually alerted they should turn on the the alarm tower should be uh, should turn on the alarm so that's the next step and I'm going to stop this episode right here so thanks for watching as always project files will be available for the download in the patreon page link would be in the description below and if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patreon club see you in another episode goodbye